response to Jarhead 6 over the Ferguson, Missouri thing. Uh, been looking at that a little bit. And, uh, coming down with a cold. But, yeah, I don't think it's Ebola. Okay. But uh, we've had weather changes. So with uh, Ferguson, Missouri, there, there is no... There's no right side in that situation. They're all incredibly dysfunctional. And so, in determining or demanding any kind of policy or concessions in that, or, or becoming a party in that conflict, uh, people I'd give advice to, and let's say, you know, what we might call the Patriot Movement or something like that, I've told them there's only two legitimate activities that I think we could be able to coordinate for. One is fixed location site security for non-combatant, uninvolved parties. The other would be uh, evacuation services for non-combatant, non uninvolved parties. And that does not include the media. I think the media is very much involved with this, especially there's a lot of people who are really the public relations management of one faction or another, sometimes outside factions. Uh, are, are sending their own people, and a lot of those media people are really agents of something or somebody, depending on who, who's paying their bills and what they represent. Uh, learned that recently, you know, that uh, sometimes you try to get better relations with somebody who is a media figure of one kind or another, and you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's, it's just, uh, uh, you know, turns out it was a big expensive waste of time. And other times, then, uh, you could. But one of the things I started to realize very early in this game, and this was back in the 1990s, is that they're, they're just not providing security for media, and then they kind of go up and start doing this gonzo journalism thing on people, uh, maybe, maybe trying to really push buttons with somebody. That's... That's not something that somebody with, uh, uh, let's say, a political viewpoint or something like that is going to be able to safely do. I mean, that's something paid security only really ought to be messing with. And as far as uh, somebody with, uh, you know, somebody in the libertarian movement or something like that, if you're in a security business, I think Ferguson's a place where you can find some work. Uh, I think it's a place where there are people who can afford it. There are people who uh, should be willing to pay for it, that sort of a thing. If you send a larger organization in to take over a building or a location for a temporary period of time, and you have a portion of your people doing volunteer work, okay, uh, volunteer site security, evacuation, uh, something like that, I think there's, I think that would be a good thing, okay. I think, I think it would be a good thing where maybe. Uh, some, one portion of your people are on paid SIG gigs, another portion of your people are doing volunteer gigs, but you divide up the money evenly uh, within your organization. Uh, that, I think, would work, especially if, let's say, you're all there for free, but there's a gear fund and a, um, and a uh, sustenance fund, you know, as far as all the food and all that kind of stuff while you're there. Um, you know, gas, food, all that kind of stuff. Uh, subsi uh, subsistence is covered on site, and uh, gear. You know, this is gear fund. And if people get issued something, depending on what it is, you know, you could have it where they keep it. And uh, I think that's valid. Uh, and that's where you're providing security and evacuation services. With evacuation services, you would have, uh, let's say, some trucks. Or you obtain rental trucks, and, you, and, and for somebody who is an uh, uninvolved party, wants to evacuate, you, you would be providing services where, under normal circumstances, a normal moving company would not provide those services, because it would be considered too dangerous or something like that. Uh, the thing about that is, if you start tangling with <laughs> uh, one faction or another in that whole situation, then uh, you may have become a new faction. But that's very difficult to predict, except that what I would say is that going in, you would make a very clear and concise public announcement that you are not a faction in that thing. If anybody starts to behave in a declared hostile manner, well, then you become a faction, but 
you need to maintain a focus on what you're there for. Uh, and, and that's not to dictate a policy on anything except for, you know, with a site security, with a personal security for uninvolved parties, then you would uh, take whatever action you're going to do, whether it's a measured response or whether or not somebody's decided to game on and it's rabid junkyard dog time. Okay, it's, it's time to say, you, you jumped the wrong fence, and now you're going to mess with the rabbit junkyard dogs. Anyway, i got to clean up here. I'll talk more in a few minutes. Sorry about that. It's not hanging on my nose. Anyway, um, I took a bunch of vitamin C. I hope this will pass or I don't have blood coming out of anything. So, yeah, I, I would say site security and um, evacuation services. You know, that's about it. I, I, I you know, as far as... You know, what's right or wrong with the factions? I, I would say that the rioters are mostly wrong. And the cops there are mostly right, but they've done some, they've done some bad shit, man. I mean, he, there's no way I would be side to side with those people. No way. I mean, I, no. I mean, some of that stuff they've done is... I wouldn't have anything to do with them, man. And if you, if people knew, you know, if people knew who I really am and some of that, that's saying something. Uh, I, I would not roll with those guys. Um, the, um, but as far as, uh, you know, non-combatant, non-faction type people, site security, evacuation services, that's, that's valid. And especially if you're getting paid for it. But um, you probably would want to do a fair amount of charitable work on that on a, as, as you can afford a basis. Um, you know, four to six hours of uh, uh, live paid versus, you know, two to four hours of charitable or depending on how you split your personnel up, that sort of a thing. Uh, it might be something to consider, let's say, making a deal to take over a hotel or a motel. And then uh, providing security there. Okay, that might be something valid. Especially since some of the hotel motel chains might see it to their advantage to contribute the location for that. Say anybody is feeling unsafe, we're going to have this place open for one week, we're going to have extra security people, uh, you, we're going to have people to escort you to and from your house to uh, stay here or move your kids here or something like that. That, if there were volunteers that were providing armed security for that type of situation, I think you might, I think, I think that might be a good thing. Uh, now, as far as outright vigilantism goes, that's a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, I think if somebody's known to really be, like, busted into houses and raping children, that sort of a thing, and somebody starts hunting those people down and they actually get the ones who do it, then you've got an interesting public relations coup with something like that. So you would play it by however you play it. And that's one of the reasons why there's a lot of things in Ferguson, Missouri right now, which are a power vacuum. And there's several different groups of people and factions trying to fill that power vacuum. What I see going on with that is that it's, it's difficult for non-blacks to look into a situation like that and say, oh, we're the people that are going to fill that power vacuum for some reason. And so that's where, in one sense, I would almost say this isn't a situation which is really going to be governable by people where the majority in that location are going to see that as a hostile thing. On the other hand, everybody's rights should be protected under those circumstances, but we know that the protection of a lot of rights is going to be kind of selective. And we can't protect everybody's rights all the time with this. So some kind of a decision has to be made over where resources, limited resources, are going to be focused. And again, that gets back to site security and evacuation. So those, that's, that's what I think people should consider doing. And there's various ways you could do that. I could discuss them at length. And, um, but determining or 
or demanding this or that policy on the part of the factions that are there, I think is going to be difficult, problematic, and unnecessary for somebody who wants to get involved and do the right thing.